been a while here we go got a little bit of a breeze today as you can see the hay swaying in the wind wind breeze whatever you want to call it but if you can hear in the background it's that time we're gonna mow some hay yep well you just waited patiently or impatiently here you go we're gonna get this big old 806 out the workhorse that she is we're gonna get her out we're gonna do some mowing hay mowing Got it paired up with uh, the John Deere 260 disc mower. It's about a seven, almost eight foot cut, about seven and a half to eight foot cut. Uh, but I like it, does a real good job mowing. Uh, so, anyway, hang on. We'll get the old girl rolling across the field and I'll give you some ride along footage if you want to stick around and watch that. Uh, and I'll try to get you the whole, all three, pro all the processes, mowing, raking, tedding, tedding, raking, and then the final, uh, those that are kind of following the channel, uh, whatever it is, follow my channel, and you know I've got the old, I bought, uh, bought an upgraded baler this year, a New Holland 565 square baler. I've not showed you that in the field yet, but you have seen me talk about updating my equipment and that stuff there, so I'll try to get some footage of that baler going this time and show you it working in the field, just taking in the, doing its thing, so hang on, we'll do something here in a minute, we'll get you back going here, so hang on. Okay, here we go. Uh, Alright, now this is my method opening up the hay field. Doesn't matter if it's my little two acre patch or in the past if it's been however many acre field. Well, I've always done a field to start out. I'll go around the outside first. Uh, yes, I know the tractor mashes hay and all that, but usually the disc mower has done pretty good at picking up my tracks, cutting them out, and I've used the hay conditioner mowers that I've had in the past. I've had an international 990 nine foot cut. I've got still got the old over here in the distance you can see the old international 1190 which it's a nine foot cut. Those are sickle bar cutters that the hay conditioners they did fine pull my tracks up and went on a field like this. And I did that mainly so I'm cutting out to the edge of the field all the way and not leaving much behind. Um, and it's easier for my lazy butt figuring out my depth. I have trouble sometimes figuring my depth. But uh, uh, anyway, there's another quick addition to it. Uh, give you a few minutes to get this thing going again, and uh, then I'll give you the ride along. But just uh, stay tuned if you want. If not, well, okay. Hang on there. And there's a little tidbit on my little method of madness mowing hay. Um, shit, raise my jack stand. But anyway, another thing to remember too is uh, when I open up a hay field, I like to go at least at least six passes on the end. That'll give me a good 40 to 45 feet to come out, turn around, and go back in with. Uh, there again, give yourself room to turn and hit your rows and stuff. Uh, that's the main concept behind that, just give myself lots of room to do things. Uh, and uh, go from there. I got about five passes done now, I got one more round to do. Then just do a little bit of cleanup on my corners because I am not the best with a three point tool doing corners. But other than that, uh, yeah, hay could be a little taller, but uh, considering the wet year we've had, I'm just glad I got what I got. Uh, of course, that over over there, 
Um, not the best quality stuff. This stuff over here has got more of the grasses. I like to see some volunteer alfalfa from past alfalfa plantings and volunteer red clover from past plantings I've had in here that have come back up, which I'm okay with that. I like that. But uh, otherwise, you know, we've got the Timothy, the uh, rye grasses, the orchard grass. Got some buckhorn in there. I don't know where that come from, but you know, eh, it'll all eat. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna fix my mistake over here on the uh, by not picking my dang jack up like an idiot. And uh, there's my blooper. And then I'll get back to mowing this, and then we'll see so what else we can show you a little further down the road. Hell, probably working on. Uh, it's going to be 10 minutes just seeing clips and me complaining. Anyway, hang on. We'll keep showing you some more stuff. And for those of you that are curious, that John Deere 260 disc mower I got, it was actually built by, manufactured by Kuhn Manufacturing. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but there's you a little tidbit of information there for you. Trivial, but information. And how I usually have my mower set up. I have it set so it's uh, it'll be chubby. For it sets pretty much level. Uh, I'll leave it set kind of level so that way the blades aren't hitting into the ground and leave eh, about two and a half, three inches of of the stem of the grass behind. It won't take it down to the ground all the way. But uh, that's just how I've been leaving it set up. And of course, you want to change that pitch and angle further down and cut close to the ground. All you got to do is take your uh, take your third arm here and just shorten it up, and that'll tilt the whole thing around and do what you want as far as uh, angle and height. As far as that, leaving you know height of the grass behind, but. Otherwise, that's kind of how I leave mine set up. Does a pretty good job. So, anyway, that being said, um, it's probably going to be kind of a long video and I like, but uh, there's the hayfield done. Uh, nice breezy day. July 23rd, 2019. Nice day out. A little breeze helped dry this hay right out for me. May I get it bailed up by Thursday. I'll do a little push, but we'll try for Thursday because it's Tuesday today and uh, go from there. As always, uh, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.